awesome. It's awesome. So the next five years here, uh, we will open the North Rosenberg Neighborhood Resource Center. We believe we'll launch a, a full menu of adult uh, programs and we'll open an additional UCAN Academy, allowing us to serve 80 children after school. Well, 2015, all this has happened uh, with our local community development friends initiatives, but there's a couple things that we're proud of that we wanted to mention tonight. In 2015, we launched a community development leadership program. We've, we realized we're learning some things that we need to share, and to date, we've trained 13 interns in the principles of Christian community development, so we're really excited about that. We also were selected in 2015 to be part of the Rice MBA uh, capstone program. We knew we'd grown very rapidly. And uh, we needed to, to work closely with these MBA students and professors to build some solutions for a sustainable future. And so they developed some key fundamental developments and improvements that we've implemented to take attack poverty into these next five years. Well, you move the timeline up, it's June of this year, and just one mile from our office headquarters is the community of River Edge. It's the one that's next to Larry's Mexican there on 90, kind of underneath the bridge. And uh, it was inundated with floodwaters from the Brazos River. And uh, the city of Richmond approached us and said, you know, no one is really showing up for this community. Would you guys come over and take a look? And uh, so we mobilized our TAC Poverty Headquarters staff to serve, which quickly grew to uh, hashtag Rebuild River Edge. And as of today, we've mobilized over 600 volunteers that have contributed 1,200 hours serving 85 families right there in, in, in River Edge. And that work is ongoing. There's projects that are set up through the end of this year and into the next. We've actually even added a staff person to manage the ongoing recovery efforts uh, here. So as we pause tonight to reflect on the last five years, you know, usually in a gala, you just talk about one year, y'all. Whew, that was five. Because we haven't done this before. But we really wanted to share this story of what God has done. And I, I am overwhelmed, overwhelmed with God's faithfulness and provision through you and literally thousands of others that couldn't fit in this room tonight. We've made mistakes. It's been an amazing ride. We've learned so much. We've witnessed transformation in individuals and families and churches and communities. And we really do have this sense that we are just getting started. And that's an exciting sense for us. So over the next five years, at the rate that things are going, we really believe God is going to triple. That's a crazy group right there. Yeah. Woo. We believe God is going to triple our impact. How will that happen? I'm so glad you asked. Uh, as we wrap up, allow me just to give you a little view into the window of our next five years. Over the next five years, Attack Poverty will launch two new Friends initiatives. We believe one is in Houston and one in Uganda. We're going to be rolling out something brand new that is called Attack Poverty Affiliates. And Attack Poverty Affiliate is this an autonomous Friends initiative that leverages Attack Poverty branding, systems, philosophy, resources, and services. Affiliates are responsible for their own fundraising and governance, but they have full access to Attack Poverty's learn best practice, experience, brand recognition, as well as consulting and back office support. And we'll launch 10 of these affiliates over the next five years, and we believe many of these will be outside of the great state of Texas. And I'm pleased to publicly announce tonight that our first affiliate is First Colony Church of Christ in the community of Four Corners, Texas. So let's give them a hand. <clears throat> Two other brand new things that we created in the area of advocacy and awareness that we're unveiling for the first time tonight. One is for churches. It's called Poverty Sunday. When your church hosts a Poverty Sunday, you educate and mobilize your congregation to stand with the poor in real, tangible, empowering, and non-harmful ways. There's a whole website, povertysunday.com. It's chock full of resources, stats, and materials that are specifically designed for the church, youth groups, children's ministry. We're really excited to launch this. And our five-year goal is to see 100 churches host a Poverty Sunday. The second uh, is advocacy awareness program is for schools. And it's called Pennies for Poverty. Did you know that half of the world lives on $1.25 a day? 
And so we want to leverage Pennies for Poverty as an educational tool in area schools to bring awareness to the impact of, of poverty both here and around the world. Our five-year goal there is to have that campaign in 50 schools. So our budget for this last uh, fiscal year has been $1.1 million. We believe it will take $7 million over the next five to accomplish the vision that is set out before us. So this is our story. Looking back, looking ahead, and I thank you so much for being a part of it. I've asked Patrick Kelly, the senior pastor here at River Point, to come and, uh, and close out our night. Um, Patrick is this guy who said yes to a crazy guy who had no idea what he was doing. And so I just want to say thank you for that, Patrick, and uh, I'm glad you're here. You have a night. Thanks, yeah. Well, thank Another you, Richard. Night. Awkward hug. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> hey, I have loved getting to know Richard. It was just exactly like Richard said uh, years ago. And he, uh, I, I remember him at a staff retreat telling me that we have got to do something. Well, I was fairly busy at the time. And I said, we as in you, yes, let's do something. And R Richard took off and uh, went, went across these railroad tracks. And he came back with a vision and a story that I knew was anointed by God. It's just a, a powerful thing. And I, I just, I, I have to, as a pastor, tell you something. And I know you didn't come here for a sermon, but a lot of people make this a lot harder than it has to be. But Richard tells us and shows us, him and Diana, of really how easy it is to be used by God. I mean, we, we have this sort of romantic view of how in the world can we be used by God? Something so grand, something so amazing that we've seen and witnessed over the last five years of this great organization. And it's simple. You show up. That's all you do. If you show up, you don't have to know what to say or what to do. You don't even have to be very helpful. But if you're there and present, that's re really what happens. The incarnation was the most significant thing God ever did for us because he showed up in our world. He showed up in our life. And that's what Richard did. He showed up in a powerful, powerful way. We've always told people around here to go on a foreign mission trip before you die. We always tell people some of you need to go pretty quick. And, um, <laughs> but Richard's kind of taken this idea and said, instead of just going on a mission trip, why don't you be a person on mission? A much bigger vision, a much bigger goal, a much bigger understanding of God leading his children. And so we've said, we want to be on mission with Richard. We want to be on mission with Attack Poverty, Friends of uh, North Richmond and beyond. We want to be the people that go on the journey. We need a great leader, and we have that in Richard and, Branda and Brandon and the whole team. And what's happened over the last five years for us as a church, I can just tell you as the pastor here, has I think been much more beneficial to the people who have walked across the city to go into a place that they've never been before. We've benefited more than the city we went to serve. North Richmond benefited, there's no doubt about it, but the people that have come back and their worldview has changed and their vision of humanity has shifted. And them seeing God use them in just simple ways has created a depth in our people, a depth of faith. So people have come to believe in Jesus because we showed up. And people, homes have been transformed and lives have been renewed and families have been changed. And so I have an invitation for you today. You were drug here and you were made to wear this ridiculous tie. And, um, but for a reason. Um, this is not only a celebration of what has happened, but it's a celebration of what's going to happen. This is an opportunity for you to show up, for me to show up. My church, River Point Church, plays a very small part in this deal, but we are all in. I'm all in. My wife, Lisa, is all in. We are totally and completely transformed by this idea that we should have the heart of God to people who have been marginalized and harmed by poverty. And we can do something about it if we'll just show up. So we have a very aggressive goal. This is just like Richard Logan to set something out there that only God can do. And tonight, what we are going to do is raise $200,000.
We're going to raise $200,000 as a statement of faith that says to God, we're going to show up. We're all in. We're with you. We want to be a part of this thing. We want to be part of the story. We want to be able to celebrate just a year from now all that God has done because we showed up on this night in October and sacrificed just a little so that people could have a different future than the one they're headed toward right now. And so because we show up, then what we believe is a little girl won't fail the fourth grade because tonight we're going to do something about that. A family will go to bed tonight safe and secure. As many as 50 kids will come to faith in Jesus because of Mission Week. A lady is going to learn English because we showed up tonight. A young man will get his GED. Because of that, he'll have a better future and a better job and more opportunity. People will be trained with such care that they're able to get a job with the Jobs for Life program and other programs. It looks like because we showed up, a girl will have a chance to go to school because she doesn't have to walk so far to get water each day in Uganda. And we showed up here on this day, today, and new churches are going to be planted in Africa. And we're going to do something. You see, talk is cheap, but what Richard's invited us to do costs you something. And that's what I'm inviting you to do tonight. I'm asking you to show up. I'm asking you to be a part. I'm asking you to do without in some way so that somebody who has very little of anything can have a future that's so much brighter than the one they're looking at right now. And I'm going to ask you to show up financially. I'm going to ask you to give. And I so enjoy asking you to give. (laughs) Mostly because I'm not asking you to give to our church. I'm asking you to give to a man's vision and to an organization that as you've heard, I mean I'm just amazed as I've heard um, Richard talk about all the things that God's done in five years. Um, I'm asking you to buy into this vision in a powerful way, in a sacrificial way. In a big way. And I'm asking you to be a part of this journey going forward. And it's such an honor and a privilege to go on this trip. Because I'm going to be able to be a part of what God's doing in the future. So here's what we're going to do. On your table, there's some envelopes. So everybody get an envelope. And if you're feeling a little pressure, that's called the Holy Spirit. (laughs) I'm not charismatic, but I might be tonight, okay? Okay. And so I want you to get everybody get an envelope, and there's a card in that uh, uh, envelope. And I I want you to begin to think about right now uh, filling that card out. Now, don't put anything down right now because you haven't had enough time to really let this soak in. That's going to happen in the next minute or two. Just think. I know you came in here. You knew this was a fundraiser, but now it's different. It's about you showing up. And, and how do you want to show up? And I know you could put an amount of money on that card and be done with this. But I want you to think about that. I want you to do something that you didn't plan on doing. And I, and I want you to do something courageous. Not crazy, but courageous. You can do that on this card. There's also a, uh, on your phone if you like to give money through your phone, which If you're a millennial, you're you're nuts to do this, but okay. And you can go to the website and push the Donate Now button and be a part of it that way. But there's a couple of ways to give. You can give a check tonight, and you could write that amount, and they give that check, and put that check in the envelope, and we'll we'll make good use of that. Or what I'd really like you to do is... Is, is decide on an amount of money that you just probably couldn't write that check tonight. You can write part of that check, but you can't write that whole check. And so what we want you to do is partner over the next year or two years to make that amount come true for this ministry and for this, for this work. So I, I, want you to, I want you to show up. That's what I want you to do. And if you'll just do that, I promise you, I promise you, 
God will do something amazing. So we're going to have some music here. So fill that out. Put the card. Put your check. Put your whole wallet. We don't care. Put your whole wallet in there. We'll get your driver's license back to you. This is worthwhile. This is worth your sacrifice. And we believe we can do something amazing here. And when you get through that, put the stuff back in. And your table host will take that. And we'll just see what God does tonight. So take just a minute. Think, pray, and sacrifice. And show up.